In this video, we are going to look at polling a file using Ajax to check for a state. And then when it gets to a particular state, we're going to stop polling. So we're basically doing something efficiently. Uh, in this case, I've chosen to go with an example like game state upcoming. So perhaps this is some kind of game, sport game, whatever. But the point is that we've got a true or false value determining whether something is happening or not or something like that. So essentially what's happening is you can see here in my network tab, I'm polling over and over again. We've got 29 requests so far. Every two seconds we're polling to this JSON file here. So what's happening is uh, we're polling to this file and at the moment live is false. So it's saying upcoming. As soon as I change this to true and save the file, you can see that the game state changes to live and the polling stops. So this is no longer polling anymore. If it continued to poll, it would be a little bit pointless because once something has changed to a state where, you know, you don't need to continue to poll anymore, there's no need to carry on polling. It will cause server, you know, it will cause unnecessary load to the server, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a little script that allows us to Ajax to this JSON file, retrieve the state, and if it uh, is true, we're going to stop polling. So uh, let's go over and start looking at our code. So at the moment, we just have a basic document markup. There's nothing here at the moment. Let's go ahead and look at what we want to actually appear on the page. So I'm just going to say game state. And this could either be uh, upcoming or it could be live or whatever. So I'm going to assume that I want it to be upcoming initially. Uh, well, at least if the game.json file represents that. And if we just set this to false. And then I want this to change. So I don't want to have to enter anything in here because I'm not sure of the state of it at the moment. Uh, we can't add markup for this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a span with a class of game state. So what we can then do is go ahead and modify this based on uh, what is displayed in the JSON file. So we're going to be going ahead and using jQuery for this because jQuery provides really good uh, JSON polling or JSON hitting uh, functionality. Uh, so we can go ahead and use the Ajax method and hit that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just grab jQuery from Google hosted libraries. And this is essentially just a CDN serve version from Google. So it's extremely quick. And if we just pop that in there, change this to HTTP because I'm working locally. Uh, ordinarily, double forward slash would be for a secure and non-secure HTTP connection. So I'm going to go ahead and just write this code on this page. You would probably go ahead and do this in an external file somewhere. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily do it on this page, but we'll do it just for the sake of the video. So the first thing I want to do is create a function. And I want this to execute as soon as I hit the page. And let's go ahead and just console log something out. So test just to make sure that works. So if we go ahead and refresh, you can see that we get tests in the console here. So we're going to be using the console to go ahead and monitor this as we go along. So what do I want to do? Well, I need to build an interval. So we want this to poll every, say, 2,000 uh, milliseconds, so every two seconds. Um, but then what we want to do is we want to check the JSON file, so we need to hit the actual file, grab the state, and then apply the state. So let's go ahead and create this uh, game state variable first of all. What this is going to do is it's going to hold the selector for this element here, and that will mean that we can just quickly reference it and go ahead and change the value inside of it. So game state. Now we can comma separate down and indent for new variables. We don't need to de declare var every time. So I'm going to create a function called poll. And then down here, I'm going to create a function called poll interval. Now, the poll interval is going to be the set interval function in JavaScript. And I'm going to go ahead and create a function within here and then define how long I want this to pop or how often I want this to poll. So let's just go ahead and console log out polling. And what this is going to do is basically just console log every two seconds the text polling down here. And you can see that the number within the blue circle represents how many times this particular string has been logged to the console. So we obviously don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to call the poll function here. 
Now, the reason that we're separating now these out into functions and this into a variable name is so that we can actually clear the interval. So what I want to happen now is within poll, I want to go ahead and console log poll. Now, what's going to happen here is when I refresh the page, you see that we get a two second delay and then we see the word poll down here. Now, I don't want that to happen. I want to initially run this poll function because remember, this function is going to include the Ajax functionality. So down here, underneath all of my variable declarations, I'm going to go ahead and run the poll function. So this is going to console log poll immediately. Keep an eye on down here, refresh, poll immediately, and then every two seconds, it will subsequently go ahead and output poll. So poll at the moment just console log something, but we want to go ahead and replace this with, this with our Ajax functionality. This is extremely easy with jQuery. If you've never worked with jQuery or if you've never uh, Ajax or anything in your life, don't worry too much jQuery is just a JavaScript library that helps us do things really quickly. And Ajaxing is just hitting a file without having to refresh the page. It's just sending uh, an HTTP request to that file and it gives us the data back. So to actually Ajax, we're going to use $Ajax. This is basically the Ajax method or function, if you like, from the jQuery library, which is represented by dollar. We could do jQuery like that, but dollars shorter. And in here, we supply an object with a few properties and a few uh, values. So in here, I'm going to say URL is game.json. So if we look at our directory structure, we've got index.html is what we're working with now. And we've got game.json, which is our JSON file here. So we're Ajaxing to that file. And this alone will actually work if we go ahead and just refresh. You can see that we uh, are already Ajaxing to this every two seconds now. You see that uh, keeping an eye on this request count down here every two seconds we're hitting this file if I just click on one of these you can see that under preview we get the actual object here with the properties and the values so we're sort of 90% there already we just need to figure out how we need to work with this data we get back but what I'm going to do now is go ahead and define a few things that we don't need to do but it kind of helps looking at this exactly what you need to do so Data type JSON just basically says to this, this method, I'm expecting JSON as a data type being returned. This is J JSON, J uh, JavaScript object notation. It's literally just an object with a property and a value. Uh, can be more complicated than this, but can be just as simple as this. Uh, but you could be hitting, say, XML or any other sort of data type, uh, including you know text or HTML. So what I'm going to do now is also define the type of request. So if we look under our network tab, you can see that under the headers, you can see the request method is get. So we don't need to define this, but it's a good idea to just define it anyway, just so perhaps when another developer comes along, they can see exactly what's going on here. So now what I have is a, is a success callback. And what's going to happen is this is going to be run whenever this, uh, this sort of Ajax request is successful. So in here, this is where we want to go ahead and grab the data and data as an argument. If we just console.log data represents basically our object. And you can see that will just be console logged, logged every two seconds. Obviously, we don't want to go ahead and do that. But what we do want to do is access the live property. So the initial thing that we want to do is set the game state to upcoming because we want to automatically assume it's upcoming. So in here, I'm going to say game state. Remember, we created the selector up here. So this has methods attached to it like dot text, which allow you to enter text in here and change the value. But what we want to do is go ahead and just say upcoming. OK, so now what's going to happen is instead of this just being blank, it's going to automatically show upcoming. So we've set the text of if we just inspect the element, we've set the text of this to upcoming. What we now want to go ahead and do is create an if statement here and go ahead and say if data dot live. So that will basically be true or false. And then we want to go ahead and set the game state to live. So game state dot text live. So we're like 98% there. If I go ahead and over to my network tab and refresh, let's just take a look at this. So it's polling game.json. It still says upcoming. Let's go over to our game.json file, move this down here and change this to true and see what happens when I save it. That now says live. What we're not doing, however, is 
stopping the polling when this changes to to true um, because we don't need to poll anymore because the game states live or whatever you're trying to do with this functionality so let's go ahead and just return this back to false and I'll go ahead and refresh so back to the original state it's gonna it's gonna carry on polling every two uh, two seconds but now what I want to do is within here I want to go ahead and clear interval and then the interval name and in this case the set interval function has been stored in this poll interval variable here so we go ahead and type in poll interval and what that will do is when the game state changes to live it will change the text as we've already seen and it will go ahead and clear the interval so let's head over to here and test this out and we'll go ahead and open the game.json file as well so this is polling we've got five requests six requests keep an eye on this number i'm going to go ahead and change this to true save that out the state changes up here as you can already see but we're stuck now on nine requests. No more uh, polling is taking place. So no more Ajax requests to this file are taking place now that the game state is set to live. So this could apply to any functionality at all that you're building. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but at least now we know how to poll a particular file. In this case, it's a JSON file. And then we go ahead and stop the polling once we see the result that we need.